In this video, we're going to learn the basics of mixing and look at the export functions in Cubase. Let's take a moment and look at the production cycle to see how mixdown fits in. Now, there are no hard, fast rules, but here's how the process usually flows. The first step is tracking. Tracking is the process of recording individual parts, like the voice or the instrument track that we recorded in a previous video. The second step is normally overdubbing. That's the process of adding additional tracks to your basic recording. Next is often editing. This can be cleaning up unwanted noises, fixing MIDI notes, and adding multiple takes to a single performance. Then we move to mixdown. During mixdown, all of the tracks, effects, and edits are combined into a single file. For music production, this file is normally a stereo file. After all the songs for a collection are mixed, they need to be mastered for duplication and distribution. In an analog studio, the engineer mixed a song by playing a multi-track tape recorder through a physical mixing desk and then recording that onto a two-track tape recorder, and this was all done in real time. In Cubase, the mixdown process consists of exporting a multi-track file through a virtual mixing desk into a two-track file. We'll be using the Mix Console as a primary tool during this process. Begin playback and adjust the levels of each track until you get a satisfactory rough mix. You'll probably have to make small changes as we adjust equalization and effects. There are very few hard and fast rules about mixing, and there are lots of options, so be sure to read the user's manual, visit the Steinberg knowledge base, and visit the Cubase community forums for detailed advice about mixing techniques. Having said that, here's a general rule of thumb. Less is more. When you're first learning to mix, it is so easy to overdo it with loudness, with low end, with effects, and EQ. Also, it's helpful to take a lot of breaks when mixing. Let your ears rest. Okay, if you want to control several parts at once, you can create group tracks. You can also hold down the command key, select several tracks, and link them. And now their faders move together. Many engineers begin by setting the drums so that they are the loudest part, just under the peak level, then bring in the other elements. Another technique is to set all of the faders at zero and begin to reduce anything that sounds too loud. Don't be afraid to try lots of techniques when you're first starting out. Remember that mixing involves more than just volume. Cubase allows you to control the stereo position, the equalization, and add effects. Here again, very few hard and fast rules. By panning tracks to the left and right, you'll create a wider stereo image, and you also make more room in the middle for the voice.
You can also use equalization, or simply EQ, to help the tracks fit together better. EQ is a filter that can be adjusted to boost some frequencies and cut others. Think of it as an elaborate tone control. You can use EQ correctively to fix problems or artistically to create effects. Let's jump to another project for a moment and use EQ to fix a common problem. When you're first learning to record, it's very common to get too much bass in your acoustic guitar tracks. Most of the time, this results from pointing the microphone too directly into the guitar or simply having it too close, which results in more low end. Start by clicking the E to open the channel editor. The editor has all sorts of routing and selection controls at the top, tabs for effects and the channel strip to the left, and the center area is for adjusting the channel strip and the EQ controls. The EQ can adjust up to four frequency ranges at once, so begin by turning on each of the four sections. Each band has three controls, gain, frequency, and Q. The gain control is used to boost or cut the volume at a specific frequency. The frequency control lets you select what range you want to adjust, and the Q control is used to shape how tightly or how broadly the adjustments applied. Here are two rules of thumb for using EQ. If possible, try to get the sound you want by cutting rather than boosting. This will leave you with a cleaner mix when you're finished. Second, try to avoid using more than about 6 dB of gain unless you're trying for an extreme effect. If you have to use a lot of EQ to fix the tone, you can probably get a better sound by using a different microphone or different microphone placement. Many acoustic guitars have a little extra bass around 150 to 200 hertz. So let's start in that area to fix this problem. Here's another trick. If you're trying to eliminate a problem frequency like this, you may be able to locate it faster using an extreme boost and then fishing with the frequency control like this. There's the problem. This is the frequency range which is too loud, and now that we've identified it, we can use a subtle cut to ease it out of the track. Let's listen to a quick A-B comparison to check our work. Back in the original project, we're almost ready for mixdown. But first, let's return to the subject of effects. There are thousands of effects out there, but the most common types include reverberation, Delay, 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 dynamics or volume control, and modulation effects like chorus and flanger. You can add effects to a track in two basic ways. Each method is useful in different situations. For example, if I want to use a compressor to help control the volume of a track, I need the compressor to control the entire track, so I'll set it up as an insert. However, if I want to use an effect in a more subtle fashion, which is common for reverb, I'll set that up as a send effect. This allows the process signal and the original signal to blend. Let's insert a compressor across the drum track to help tame some of the louder portions. Open the channel editor for the drums. And we could add a compressor here from the menu. but Cubase has an easier option. Open the Channel Strip tab, and you'll see that there's a compressor already built into every channel. A compressor is an automatic volume control. It reduces the sound level whenever the channel goes above the threshold you set. 
By adjusting the threshold, attack, and release, we can squeeze the loud and soft portions closer together for a more even sound. Now let's go ahead and create a send effect to apply just a little reverb to all the tracks. This will help create the illusion that they were all recorded together in the same acoustic space, which will tie the mix together. But be careful with reverb, it's easy to overdo it. Now we'll add a little reverb to our other tracks as well. Okay, let's generate our first mix down. Open the File menu and select Export Audio. The Export dialog allows us to choose the quality and the location of the mix. A stereo WAV file will be the highest resolution, but it's also very large. Since this is just a rough mix, and we may want to send it by email to other musicians, let's mix it down in the MP3 format. That'll be good enough sound quality for now and a small enough file to move around easily. Fill in the ID tag information and make sure to set your path. Let's use the desktop. You can have Cubase automatically add the mixed file back into the project. When you're ready, click Export. And here's our first mixed stereo file. Now we've only scratched the surface of what Cubase and you can do. Be sure to check out the Steinberg Knowledge Base, the Cubase online community, forums, and the operations manual to find out even more. From everyone here at Steinberg and Streamworks Audio, thanks for choosing Cubase, and thanks for watching.